Welcome to GBIRL, the podcast looking at the real business world of esports, gaming, and streaming with the people and personalities behind it all. Here is your host, Bill the Conqueror. All right, everybody, welcome back to the podcast. Today is an interesting conversation because because streamers, content creators are are their success is built around their community. the The larger your community, the more likely you are to get noticed by a potential sponsors and it gives you the opportunity as a creator to also get your creations out in front of more people and and I've I struggle with how to build a solid community that stays a long time myself I try I've tried various things I know that one thing that sponsors look at is the size of your uh, of your uh, 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 discord community and then so I I enlisted the help of the gentleman that you see on the screen right there he is the J man he's in charge of the lighthouse discord I am part of the lighthouse I am a I guess you call me a uh, mod in the lighthouse discord and I wanted to get his thoughts and his his feedback on what it takes to build a solid Solid Discord community, Discord community that is active and not toxic and is full of people that actually like hanging out together, and also a Discord that is not just another place where people go to find other people to run raids with and do activities with. I it it seems like a lot of Discords I hang out in turn 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 into into places that two things happen one everybody posts their puts their uh, going live links which are completely worthless because they all go into a channel that everybody mutes anyway and two it how do you keep the discord from turning into another another um hell fg group and so i have the j man he is the he is the lighthouse discord king he is the he's he's one of the one of the one of the high-end PvP sweats that I know. So, J-Man, thank you very much for making time for me today, man. Dude, thank you for having me. And also, thank you for being an emissary in the Lighthouse, or the, a moderator, as <laughs> someone referred to it, because uh, thanks to folks like you, we we can have a Discord that's running, you know, in ways that you just mentioned. Right, right. And, and, <laughs> and, and, and for me, it's funny, because that stuff just doesn't happen overnight. You just don't go find, you know, six random people and say, you know, uh, you're mod. It takes time. And so, mm -hmm. and so I, so, so, so let's start at the beginning. Walk me through the earliest, the earliest, earliest steps of the lighthouse, because, because obviously you started from zero and now you're at a mm -hmm. point where you've hit the cap in terms of, terms of, uh, uh, it, you've hit the, you've hit the membership cap. And so in order to grow beyond that membership cap, you would actually have to pay a month. In order to grow beyond that, you would actually have to pay a, uh, a monthly fee. And you guys don't want to do that. And that's fine. That's, that's totally fine. But whoa, 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 whoa. And to be clear, we actually do. So like oh, okay, we, are, okay. are, are, we, we do have our server boosted to like the maximum uh, possibility. But again, right. that's not like the admins because I think it's 30 boosts. And it's not the admins just like splitting it. Like that's the generosity of many people. And like okay. as I'm scrolling down like the sidebar here, like I'm seeing that little – looks like a little pink like ruby, almost like a little gem to show that you right. – I uh, have boosted the server, and I'm seeing a whole bunch of them. So again, it kind of goes back to that team team mentality, right? Oh, so okay, so 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 walk me through the like the very first early versions of the lighthouse. Yeah, sure. So um, I guess a little bit of it has to start with my beginning too, right? So sure, sure. Uh, I, I always knew that I wanted to create content. Like even when I was a little kid, I used to make these silly little videos with my friends. Like I always liked just making stuff, you know, making videos. Uh, and I knew I wanted to do that for Destiny, but I needed sort of an easy entry to feel it out. Right. And for me, that was Instagram because I could – gather my clips together and I can just post a video and I can meet new friends. And that was like the easiest entry for me, you know, as someone who works full time and, and has all those things going on with life. Right. Right. So it was a great start. And then I was like, yeah, you know, I kind of want to get into like more things like streaming, being live. And I noticed that 
it, it was there was kind of a recipe to that. So you had your your socials, you got your logo, and you created a Discord. It's kind of the thing that everyone was doing. Right. And a lot of times when I approach these recipes, I always say, well, how can I put my own flavor or my own taste on it that's a little bit different? Right. And that's when I said, well, instead of making a personal Discord, just another J-Man Discord out there, I was like, I'll make a community-driven one where it's completely agnostic of an individual and we'll call it a group and you know as you mentioned i really enjoy the pvp side of destiny and one of the most aspirational places to visit in the game is the lighthouse and i was like great like you know we'll, we'll call it the lighthouse i had some really crappy logos that i <laughs> uh snagged off the internet and i guess that's how it started right. so that's how like you know we i, I press the button like create server um <laughs> There's a lot more to tell after that. <laughs> so I'm happy to go in like with that whichever direction. Like I think the next thing to talk about is like how do you start to actually get people in? Right, right. Do you want to hear that description? You yes, know? I do. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So for me, um, and to be clear, when this server started, like trials wasn't back in the game yet. Like it was still on a hiatus, like in between trials of the nine, when that was sort of deprecated from the game, you know, uh, and to the point where they were bringing like the old trials of Osiris back. So there was kind of like this, this great point where there really was no end game PVP. So right. what I was doing is I was going to the lfg discord server like mm -hmm. that massive pc uh lfg service that a lot of people use and i would find people that just needed help in survival in the competitive playlist because back right. in the day there was actually meaning and value for hitting 2100 like you can get revoker or recluse yep. and even going 5500 for like unbroken title or not forgotten at those times so i used to snag people in the in, you know in there and we'd be in the pc lfg discord and we'd hang out and i'd help them out you know we we would increase their glory and if we had a good time and we vibed i'd say listen like you know, instead of being in this massive LFG server, I'm starting this little community, like the Lighthouse. And, you know, I'm trying to get more reliable people that are just good, genuine people that like to play the game. You know, they 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 like to help folks out. Sometimes they need help. You know, we're all here for each other type thing. Do you want to join? And that was the most effective way of bringing new people in and, and kind of like starting all those conversations and just, you know, starting raid groups and, and all that stuff. Right. Okay, and, and that's okay, and, and that's an interesting vibe because when I think of you know trying to build a place where people hang out together and do stuff together, that makes sense. So raid mm -hmm. helps, PvP helps, other helps in the game. So yeah. I, so 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 I guess that in that early stage, whoa, what were some of the early lessons that you learned about? trying to figure out which people fit and which people don't yeah and and it's a great question and it's also like the method that i was using is i was able to vet them in the different server first right so right. we were playing in a different channel you know um so for me i'm always looking for folks that i just find personable i think that's like the the first trait you know if people mm -hmm. are just kind of like welcome to having a good time like we're not raging at the game we're not right right breaking tos you know we're kind of just having a good time that's to me that's like okay like let this person in because one of my philosophies is when people join the community i like to lead with the thought of they're going to be great i don't like to lead with the thought of oh there's new people joining are they going to break the rules so like you know, right. we have a, a brief little thing when you join the server today, like you got to accept our terms of service, like here's our rules, just so you're aware of them. But, right. you know, in other discords, when you kind of join them, you have to click through like so many things and this rule and that rule and accept this and do that and do that. And as I'm joining, I'm like, it feels like this discord is already assuming that I'm going to be breaking their rules. And it's right. like, it's not welcoming, you know? So th that's that's kind of how, how it went. It's like, you have that that personable intro and then they kind of go through and they they see our, our terms, like very, you know, brief to the point. And, and that's kind of like their barrier of entry. 
So, okay, so that that right there, that speaks directly to your personal experience in the game. And I completely mm -hmm. get why some people in their servers have layers of that stuff. You mm -hmm. have to click this, you have to click this, you have to accept this, you have to uh, 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 assign yourself this role because their experience in the game is they've dealt with people who are mm -hmm. very toxic. And yes. so they, they, they think that there are more, pe there are more toxic people than there are quote unquote, uh, nice people in mm -hmm. whether it's destiny two or Warzone or, or, um, or, or Apex Legends. So, so, so was there a point at which you had a, an experience or a series of, a series of experience that made you think, hey, maybe I need to add some more to this because mm -hmm. I've just, uh, I've had this string of toxic people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the first, like, uh, I guess, moderator features, because, you know, we're, we're at a point right now where I'm like the only admin, right? So we haven't gotten to the part of the story with the hater aids and the bonus and right. the T's and the Dizzy's and the Starkiller. So, like, right. it's just me still at this point. Right. Um, and one of the first things I implemented was that the kindergarten role. Okay. So when people first join, they accept, right? Mm -hmm. And they're automatically given a role that has some limitations to it. So I think with that role, like, you know, you can't post uh, website URLs. Okay. Uh, you can't like share video yet. Like there's a couple of things that, that you're, you're limited to. Okay. And that it prevents a couple of things. One, it prevents bot spam. Yep. So like if all these bots come in and they're trying to like spam like fake URLs, like it kind of prevents that. Like the bot basically just gets rejected from the server. Yep. And if people are coming in to be crap heads i'll use the the pg-13 <laughs> version <laughs> um uh, it kind of it kind of prevents them from doing that as well and like you know we we have an audit log and right. what you find often is like when these folks come in and they try to do like a hate raid or something they realize that they don't have the permissions to do so and most of the time they just leave right so it's a nice little like automated thing um that that we had added where you know you kind of have this probationary period to prove yeah. that you really just want to be here whether it's you you know you want to find some folks to play with or mm -hmm. you know whatever and then after you uh do a certain amount of discord activity so uh text channel participation and right. uh, voice channel participation right again in an automated fashion it's going to bump your your role up to a lighthouse member and that's when you're going to start to get more functionality uh within the server so i i highly recommend that everyone does that we do it through me six bot it's a pretty yeah. popular bot out there but it, it's it's just it's really useful when your discord is, is scaling and you don't right. want to like stare at it all day you know it's it's a nice right. little way to kind of help you out okay and now and now if you brought it up let's talk about how do you get like-minded people around you like mm -hmm. like haterade like uh, a bona fide hero like a uh, crazy t because those pe those people in my experience are hard to find it, it seems yeah. like there are a lot of people that that think they want to be kind of like a high level admin in, in, in a, 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 a discord, but they don't want to spend the time to build mm -hmm. the discord to the point where you're, where it's actually a thing. So uh, uh, um, uh, I'm sure each one of those people has their own specific story. I mean, <laughs> how'd you find, find a, a, a Bona? How do I find Bona? Um, well, I'll, I'll go. What I'll do is I'll go in order, so it okay. makes sense. Okay. Because you sure. know, like sometimes there was mutual friends. Like Bona was like I found through Haterade. You know, it was kind of Got a mutual it. thing. But um, it really it kind of goes back to Instagram again. So like hmm. personally, if you ask me, like Instagram is is probably the least popular social media platform that Destiny streamers use. Okay. I feel that most people focus their energy on Twitter. And, you know, if people are really going above and beyond, they'll, they'll have an active YouTube. And yeah. I feel that TikTok has worked in the mix. But I feel that, if, you know, if you look at the, some of the top names in the, in the D2 directory when it comes to streaming, a lot of them don't use Instagram. However, it turns out that all the admins, like myself, were very avid Instagrammers. So I had met Dizzy, 
because I was scrolling through, you know, the Explore page, trying to right. meet new friends, and he had the Drunk Destiny podcast. Okay. And I was like, oh, my God, those are my two favorite things, drinking <laughs> beer and playing Destiny. Okay. So I immediately became friends with him and Dumpy, who is his podcast co-host, you know. Right. Um, and we started getting into streaming together, you know. And, and as you're getting into streaming, you kind of identify, like, who's really invested in this. Okay. You know, who's really putting the time into it versus who's kind of, like, just testing the water. Right. And that's what I started to notice in folks like Haterade. Like, Haterade's really in this. He's got a clean logo and an overlay. He's really good at the game, and he can Sherpa people. And he's got a schedule. You know, like, yeah. he's doing everything right. Yep. And we all started just gravitating toward, towards each other. Like, that. those were kind of my first two uh, main contacts was Haterade and Dizzy. And... Haterade and I, even though like we were kind of just acquaintances on Instagram, we somehow landed in the same clan. Huh. We were in, <clears throat> it had multiple names, but we were in the same clan. And me and him were like the only two active people kind of in this clan. Wow. Play, like actually playing together, you know? Yeah. And one day I just, I got him on a call and I'm like, look, man, I'm like, we're in this clan. I see, you know, you're out here, you're hustling, you're, you're grinding, you're doing it right. And I'm like, I got this server over here that's got a couple hundred folks in it now. I'm like, why don't we just join forces and just make our own clan? Right. And he was hesitant at first because he, like you mentioned, he knows how much work goes into this. Right. Like, not that he was hesitant, but he kind of cautioned me because he's done this in the past. He's been an admin. He's like, you know... I'm, I'm all for it, but he's like, you know, it's a lot of work, so like, let's be prepared for it. I'm like, listen, man, if you're on board, I'm on board. Okay. So HaterAid signed up with me. And then we knew that we were going to need some support and some admins, so that's when we pulled in Dizzy. And HaterAid also had additional contacts that he thought would be good people as well. And what ended up happening, what really kind of bumped the server like onto the market was star killer had his kind of like remaining clan that was like a group of like five six folks and they merged with us and the same thing with Bo bona okay. he kind of was in this transition of of migrating to pc and you know cr cross play was not even a thought back then and you know the folks that came over to pc he he joined us as well so that was like that mu mutual contact between haterade and myself <clears throat> And then he also had known T as well. Okay. And we just knew that T was going to be a great, a great addition as well. Cause she's like, she's really creative. Yeah. Um, she's really active. She's an excellent networker. And yeah. that was just, it, it just, it was the group that kind of just came together. Like we all had this acquaintance, you know, together on, on Instagram. We all knew we were hustling and we just reached out to each other and we just sealed the deal. So, Okay. That's that's that sound. It sounds like everything came together fairly, fair, fairly, <clears throat> fairly, um, fairly easily. It sounds like things mm -hmm. just sort of like happened in the process. Mm -hmm. Was there a a time? Was were there people that you thought would be would be would be involved? You, you thought perhaps that they would be a uh, uh, good additions, and then when you got them in the door they it 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 uh turned out they weren't yeah you know um <clears throat> something for me that i'm always working on is like if if people come in you know whether they're a mod or an admin or even just a, a guest you know right. and uh maybe they break a rule or they're they're not being a good fit or something i always like to think that folks can learn and correct and right. become, you know, uh, a good person. I think like the, these days, a, a lot of um, communities are very quick to uh, like, what, I'm trying to think of like the right word, like um, sort of make assumptions, okay. you know, that this person is just like automatically not good and don't give them anyone like a chance to, to, to maybe learn. Like maybe they're just, they just don't know, you know, what, what they're doing. Like, why is that? not seen as something appropriate, you know? So 
there have definitely have been people who have come in where you know I, I give them a chance sometimes mm -hmm. too many chances right uh, and, and, you know hopefully my, my my end goal is that they kind of learn and they become just a better person for the community as a whole because if we can kind of convert someone who's like you know uh, a sour topic into someone who's positive and someone who's good for the community that doesn't just help the lighthouse that helps destiny now is this utopian thought uh, always the case Absolutely not. And sometimes right. you just, you know, what I've learned is you can't be afraid to hit the ban hammer. Right. Um, and, you know, hitting the ban hammer does come with its consequences. So uh, even though, you know, um, my knee, even though I put all this work into into the Lighthouse community, I would also argue that I'm probably the most hated person in the Discord as well. Wow. Uh, and, wow. and that, yeah, yeah. And that, that probably comes from, uh, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you have to swing the ban hammer and then... Right you're kind of left in this in this situation where their friends are still in the discord right. and then the person who was given you know issued the ban is going to their friends and saying oh j man the admins are these evil people can you believe they did this they did that and obviously every time we ban someone we're not going to publicly address it and state why we ban that person that's just right. in my opinion that's there's no need to publicize that information that's between us and that and that individual so a lot of times people don't get the insight into like why someone was banned uh and, and that's that's that fine line that i'm always trying to walk right it's like do we leave this person and take the time and the energy to try to correct their behavior so that they're a positive person or do we just swing that ban hammer and kind of like get the side eye from <laughs> other folks it's a it's a tough line but it's one that we're always working on see okay and that's really interesting that you phrase it that way i think that a lot of gamers a lot of people and and perhaps this is an age thing i'm i'm open to that too people hmm. get a especially when you're an admin in a discord uh, of a decent size, it feels like that there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a power rush when you, when you have the, when you have a situation where you ban somebody and there, there are people who maybe in their lives don't feel like they've, they've had the opportunity to be, be I'm in control and then when they have that ability to be in control they swing the ban hammer once right. and then twice and then nine times and it turns into yeah. this you know big thing and the way that you phrase it is it's really interesting that you assume the best and plan for the worst yes. versus mm -hmm. people that just try to find reasons to toss people I I right. I, I find that to be really interesting because it feels like that mindset isn't isn't the most prevalent and we with that being said we really only hear about the bad stuff we yeah we don't ever hear about the time where someone goes look look i'm really sorry that was a dumb move and i swear on a stack of whatevers i will not do that again and and you go you know what thank you very much i appreciate that don't worry you know, we'll just count this as your uh, 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 one time of, you know, screwing up and move forward. And usually those people turn into awesome. Yep. Awesome uh, 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 members of the community. And they then start to police uh, other people. And that makes uh, 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 your job way easier. Is that is that you have people who will go, hey, hey, you need to not do that because this is what happened to me sort of a concept, uh, right? Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. I mean, it, it, you. I think an important piece that you mentioned there is like there were a lot of things that I learned too. You right. know, like I, I made mistakes too. And that's when I see someone, you know, making a similar mistake, like posting a going live link in the content sharing, which is kind of like against our rules. Right. Like, I'm not just going to delete it and tell him like, yo, that's in our rules. I'm going to go and explain to him and be like, Hey, listen, like you're new here. No one kind of knows your name. A lot of people are trying to stream. Right. And from you just like slapping your link in there, like you're not going to get anyone to go to your stream. Right. You know? So it's not only just slapping a rule on someone, but it's also explaining like, this is why it's a rule. 
And it's not a rule to just be some like authoritative dictator. Right. You know, it's a rule to help the server and to help you, you know. So when, when you put it into that context, you know, people people do learn. And I've, I've seen, you know, I, I've had I've seen people come in who were those people that just slap the going live link in there. You kind of educate them and then they become a member of the community. And, and, and instead, they're actually like just trying to make content and trying to right. trying to make genuine relationships. So it's good to see like when people kind of kind of learn and you know i i still need to learn as well so right it's continuous for everyone speaking of learning now you can't grow anything to any sort of scale without values because uh uh, uh, uh otherwise you just kind of without values as your as your starting point as your as your hanker point you just kind of wander with the wind so it's so, so i guess how did you to decide what your values are. I mean, was there like a summit of you and Hater and T and Bona and Dizzy? Did you guys just all like decide, you know what? We need to have a good half an hour, 45 minute meeting to talk mm. about who we are. Yeah, we, we do try to meet as often as we can. You know, uh, as the it's it's kind of strange because we were most active during like the insane quarantine phases of, of COVID, you know, right. like work was slowed down for me. Work, I think, was slowed down for everyone. Yeah, uh, we weren't yeah. leaving our apartments because we were quarantining. So we were definitely doing the most. Then, but but we still actively meet. And uh, th those are things we absolutely talk about. We have a, a, a Gmail and a Google Drive. And often what we'll do is I'll create a document, you know, uh, like a Word doc, and I'll jot down some notes in it. And I'll send it to everyone in advance. We'll be like, hey, like, here's what we're talking about. Like, we're talking about, like, you know, organizing channels. We're talking about this next community event that we want to do. Right. We're talking about our values, like, whatever it is. And I'll let everyone, like, add their notes, read everyone's notes kind of beforehand so that when we meet, we're kind of just, like, ready to talk and, and make decisions. So that's that's definitely sort of, like, how our main values were, were created, you know, in combination of, like, talking – and, and doing too, like you learn your values from doing things, okay. not just like talking about it. So as okay. we like test things throughout the server, like add, you know, a new role or new functionality or just like work on stuff, we, we learn from that. And that's what can like drive those core pillars. Okay. So, so I, so I guess I didn't, it, it, so, so, uh, as far as the question was there a point at which you guys all sat down and actually wrote out, you know, we have five values as a group and it's these five values or these, these six statements uh, define who we are because, because, because all, all good groups, all high functioning groups that are, that, that, that have a sustained, shared past have a set of core values to them Did, yes was there ever a point at which you all of you as as admin sat down and like decided that officially or was it something that it through experiences you just sort of sort of decided on over time mm -hmm. we do have four core values okay uh, that I'm happy to share. Sure. And, you know, it was a combination of both. Like, you know, we sat down and we wrote them, but they definitely like were created over and solidified over time. Right. Um, would you like to hear? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> cool. And, and this, it's the first one that I always wonder, I'm like, no one really asked me about this. And I've always been like, confused as to why no one no one asked but the first one says i actually i'm reading them so okay. i have them up on my second monitor here got it our discord is a public server welcome to anyone who would like to join this is why the fundament is only an entity of the server as we welcome everyone whether they are part of of the clan or not and i've always wondered like why people don't ask me like why isn't the discord called the fundament like why is the discord the lighthouse you know right. and the reason is is because of inclusivity like okay we we don't want people to come to the discord or view the discord and be like oh like that is a place designed for the fundament 
and like I should go there only for fundament related things like I'm a part of the clan or I want to be a part of the clan and only that. So the way that we like to view it is the fundament is sort of like the host and everyone who is coming in here like is our guest. And no matter who you are, you're more than welcome to join and hang out and be a part of the lighthouse community that the fundament kind of like supports and, and, you know, runs. Uh, and if you like to go above and beyond, and play a, a key part in that role and be that Sherpa and, you know, help with our events and everything. Right. That's when you kind of get like <clears throat> that extra tag of, Hey, like I'm not only in the lighthouse, but now I'm a fundament member. Right. And that's sort of like our first key, key pillar there is like, we don't want to sort of be this exclusive group. Like, Hey, we're the fundament. This is our discord. It's like, no, like you're our guest. And, you know, when your guest comes over, like they get to sit in the comfy seat, you know, right? And right. you know, we bring the drinks to them, you know, right, like, right. and and that's that's the way that I, I kind of want that that vision to be, not the opposite where people join and the, it says like, here's the CEO up top, like the founder J Man, and I'm some like glorified name up there, and right. like every if to be here you need to follow my twitch channel. no it's like it's the exact opposite right like when you come like we're giving you a tour you know we're setting you up for a raid like you're mm -hmm. our guest and we're here to to welcome you it's definitely like uh that first i, I want to stray from the fact that we're talking about our, our values and, right. and core pillars there so that that's the first one so okay it, it so it if, for me so I, I read that I, I read the values when I joined, I read, I, I read mm -hmm. all the rules. And for me, that one kind of hit like, okay, that to be showed, showed some humility in that. Okay. You know, this is the discord. This is the clan. They're two separate things. And you, mm -hmm. and you are welcome here. That is like a, an actual physical representation of the, of the um, inclusivity that everybody says mm -hmm. that they want. It, it, it's, it, it seems like every Twitch chat, every Discord, every group that you ever join says that they want to be, be, be um, inclusive, yet you've taken that step of, this is what our inclusivity actually looks like, is that you have defined it specifically. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons that the, the clan and the Discord have, have, have 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 uh have uh sustained for so long is that you have <laughs> physical representations of the higher concepts that you actually uh talk about right right and i kind of touched on one of the other pillars like in that description there right i'll, I'll read it to get like the actual wording but sure we, we would ensure that the people who play key roles in our server have no special privileges. Everyone has the same capabilities of interacting and leveraging the server with the exception of moderation features. So meaning like, you know, when someone new comes in, we're not going to give them the ability to like ban people or, or create or delete channels, obviously, like because we need to moderate to some degree. Right, right. But, you know, one of the things that I kind of didn't want to see is like, you know, when you join the server, only admins can post when they're going live on Twitch. That's not fair. Like this is a community. Like why right. would only a select few of people get to do that and not everyone? So it's it's one of those pillars that every time the admins or like, you know, when the emissaries make a decision, we always have to keep that in mind. Like, is this for the benefit of everyone or is only, you know, the key players going to get a special privilege out of that and that's something that we always try to to avoid see and, and that goes that goes directly back to what i said earlier some people in their lives haven't felt like they they haven't felt like they they've had much control in their lives and mm -hmm. had had, <coughs> had much power over their lives and so they get into a situation where they have cultivated the ability to have power over something and they take that power to a level that is that is that that is is toxic in the end and and I think that's it's really 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 interesting when you when you talk about how you specifically limit 
what admins can do and the privileges that they have short of mm-hmm. making, you know, short of, short of the basic, sort of, short of, sort of the basic administration of the server, creating channels, deleting channels, uh, mm-hmm. you know, whether it's banning people or, or, sh- or, uh, 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 moving things around that need to happen. I mean, y- you can't have everybody doing that. Otherwise you have, yeah. uh, a chaos, it would be right, chaos. Right, right, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> it would exactly. be it, complete it'd be chaos. Pretty nuts. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, so that's that's uh, uh, two of them. Yes, um, and the last two I can probably group up here. So, you sure. know, this one's a little bit more straightforward, but we would create opportunities for members to become friends and to join forces for great causes, such as raising, you know, money for charities in need. Right. So, you know, when we, when we pull on an emissary, you know, obviously you know this, you know, and as admins, we, we try to make sure that, you know, we're supporting people and that the LFG channels, like, you know, we're – tagging people that are looking to do the same activity right. we're setting up you know custom games for halo on sundays or hater aid see at these events or right. um tease among us stuff you know like we're always trying to because not everyone is outspoken and mm-hmm. uh extroverted as folks who you know want to take the time to create a server right. so sometimes we we kind of act as that liaison you know like getting people talking, like getting people to make friends, getting people like into VCs and, and, and kind of uh, doing all that great stuff together. Uh, and, and this is the last pillar and, you know, kind of the one where when you have really f- generous folks who help out, you, you, you really uh, appreciate them because the last one is admins, mods, and additional folks that play a dedicated role in the server would never be given a mandate to the amount they needed to contribute. For example, we would never tell a mod that they needed to do X amount in a given day. All contributions would be on a voluntary basis as their personal lives deemed appropriate. So I'll I'll put that into context. I've been in servers, you know, and have been sort of like a key player in servers where I have an admin tell me, like, you need to send X messages a day. Hmm. And what that creates is people like logging in in the morning and saying good morning like okay that's one message uh hey hope everyone had a great lunch okay that's two messages and it's not organic conversation when you put mandates on that especially when this is like a side hobby for everyone right i feel it takes away from like the natural engagement and just like making friends so i never wanted to put that restriction on anyone like right you're going to put in what you what you get out uh, in here and we'll take, you know, as much as you can offer. Now, now keep in mind, like if you're an emissary or an admin and like you're doing nothing. Right. Then we might have to be like, hey, like maybe you just don't have enough time to like to dedicate, you know, but there, there's right. never, ever been a case where it's like, hey, like, you know, you didn't do enough activities this week with folks, folks in the server. It's like, well, maybe that person just had a busy week with work, you know. Right. And see, okay, those those two right there are uh, uh, those two values right there are really interesting. I mean, especially the third one, is that mm-hmm. is that it it really speaks to people who who are leaders. And what that means for me is you never put somebody in a situation where you're setting them up to fail. And I can speak directly to this as a as a person who is a moderator in the lighthouse, I sat through a 45 minute training with, with a, 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 a Bona where he literally right. said, you're going to do this. Here's this, here's how this works. He walked me through five things. I'm like, Jesus bone. I feel like I'm hopefully you recorded work. that. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm like, holy crap. It's like, it's like, am I at work being trained how to do my job? I, mean, I literally, it was literally one of those things that works like, okay, we're going to give you a new skill at work. Here's your training. Here's, here's all the tools you need. And I'm like, okay, this, this, this is, this is what leaders should do. I have always told people who are, <clears throat> who have, who have done things for me. I will not set you up to fail. I will not put you in a situation that makes you look bad. If you look bad in a situation, it's probably because I didn't give you enough uh, feedback, enough support. That's on me as the person in charge. And I don't think that a lot of people have that mindset of, if you're going to let someone be a mod, you need to give them the tools, Mm -hmm. the feedback and the training to do their job well. And, And if that person fails, it's on you as the leader, not on them, yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 
I definitely believe um, in kind of like th like there there's been a couple of situations where I've I've even said to the rest of the admins like look like I'll take the hit on this one you know mm -hmm. like it's I, I made this mistake or we didn't have this implemented right. correctly like I'll I'll like that's that's on me you know and the same goes when you bring on a new emissary if you if you bring on someone you know and you don't teach them anything it's like. Or, or explain like the values and you know right. how we, we like to to do things that then you can get an emissary that we were talking about earlier that just starts banning everyone because they don't like them right you know? right right like it's on the extreme end but that's something that can happen or you know emissaries who are sneaking into vcs and being like hey like come check out my twitch stream like that's not yeah. what an emissary does you know no. like so you know it's definitely important to make sure that you, you know first you understand that that person's a good fit for the role to begin right. with and then you you make sure that you know they understand the expectations as well okay so so the I, I, when it comes to bands and and i know that people get in moods and and they have bad days how do you personally personally how do you personally uh, 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 avoid the mindset of, you know, I'm just going to ban all these idiots. I don't want to deal with this crap right now. This keeps happening and I keep trying to talk to people and I, I'm just going to ban all all, uh, all 12 of these people and if I see this word in chat, I'm going to ban you. How do you keep from doing that? Yeah, so, and again, we kind of referenced this earlier. It's something that I'm always trying to work on. Right. Uh, I'm going to call out my, one of my someone who I really look up to. Okay? okay. Okay. I really look up to DMG because sure we're managing like a little over a thousand people in right. our community. DMG is managing millions of people. Yes. And I want to call out the fact that even though he does so many great things for the community and he's kind of the voice, you know, of Bungie and all that, he's also one of the most hated people, you know, like, yeah. People are hating on DMG all the time. They're taking out their frustration on him and unfairly, right? Yeah. And, and, and that's what I definitely deal with on a much smaller scale. And a lot of that revolves around swinging the band hammer. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I wish I can grab this tweet, but it would probably be buried, you know, down, way down on, on, the, on the timeline. But it was a tweet that DMG had stated where... Sometimes people are just a bad seed in the community. Right. And you just have to ban them. Yes. You know, you just you, you have to ban them and then deal with the side effects of people hating you. It's just part of the game when there's too many people there. Right. So as our Discord has continued to scale, we've definitely gotten quicker with hitting the ban hammer when we identify that just someone is not going to be a good fit. Now to keep that fair, we have a set of rules and standards that are like very transparent where if mm -hmm. you like break this rule, that is grounds for a ban. Okay. Those are the easy ones. Right. You know, if someone says something racist, you immediately ban them. Yep. You know, yep. The, the tough ones are the drama that goes behind the scenes. So people will be in a VC, you know, they're talking about whatever. And then all of a sudden I'm getting spammed by three people with messages. He, sh he said, she said, this happened, that right. happened. You got to do that. And I'm like, am I on like, you know, the elementary school playground right now? Like what the <laughs> heck is going on? You know? Right, right, and right. Those are the situations where it becomes tough because like with no tangible uh, text or anything, you right. know, to go off of, it's like, well, who's telling the truth and, and, you know, and who's, who's like lying here. So as, as we progress and we see situations like that, like we'll just swing the band hammer on both of them, you know, okay. like we'll give them a warning, you know, like, listen, don't play together. There's a thousand other people go play with someone else. Right. You know, but if you guys or gals, whoever is causing the problem here, are, are continuous offenders of like the drama scene. We're right. just going to give you the boot and you, you're not a, you're not a good fit for this community. So it, it's, it, it's, it's always tough, but you know, if the rules are being broken, you got to swing it. And again, you have to deal with the consequences of a lot of people disliking right. you. And you know, yeah. that's just a side effect. 
And so you can't make I, everyone happy, right? No, you cannot. You like, cannot. I, I think that's the old adage. You can't make everyone happy. You can't. And I guess that 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 whole bit speaks directly to this last question. Have you ever just wanted to be like, just wanted to play Destiny Two and just be left alone? Leave me alone, <laughs> y'all. Get, yes. I just want a solo queue today. Y'all are pissing me off. I'd rather talk to my my kid and my wife and my dog than any of you morons. Have you ever just want to be like, leave me the hell alone, right? There's definitely <laughs> some, you know, points like points in time like that because you know it's more than just managing the community it's like you know people want to play with you they right. want to play comp they want to play on banner they want to do you know this and that and right. you know there's definitely those evenings where it's like man i just want to do playlist strikes and have some music playing <laughs> yeah and sip on a glass of bourbon yep. and you know it, it just not have any background noise it, it, it definitely happens but uh 99% of the time, I'm always looking forward to, you know, hopping into the lighthouse after work and seeing what all my friends are doing, how their days were, what right. everyone's getting up to in the gaming world. But, you know, every now and then you can use a little bit of quiet and peace. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get that. I, I worked at a casino for a, a, a while yeah, and you just come home and you're like, I don't want to hear anything for an hour i want to sit with my headphones on and some music and maybe kind of run some strikes i mean i've had people ping me hey you want to come nope not tonight not tonight nothing personal i just want to be yep. left alone tonight and and that's that's absolutely totally fair. nothing personal nothing yep. it's not personal i i like you as a friend but not right now and that's fair and you have the right you have the right as a human being to say not right now and that's fine mm -hmm. and then when it's time you just go back to him and go hey I'm here. I'm ready. I was in a sort of a different, different headspace, and now I'm back in this headspace. So yeah, awesome. and that's why I like to schedule everything. You know, like yeah, I think you know. I know that was kind of our last question. I'll just no. I'll graze over this one real quick. You know, and how do you keep the lighthouse from being just a glorified LFG community? Right. One of the strongest things that we recommend folks do is like find people who are looking to do the same activity as you first, and then schedule it. So okay. I'm in there all the time, you know, like, hey, like, I'm looking to do, you know, uh, a fresh vault of glass. Right. After work today. Like, does anyone else want to do vault of glass? And then when I kind of see names connect, then I say, all right, like, what time is everyone free? All right. After yeah. seven for you, after eight for you. All right. Let's 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 start at 830 when everyone's kind of done yep. eating dinner. And it's a way more successful method of, like, finding, you know, new folks to play with. And it, and it keeps us away from just being an LFG service. If you're looking for an activity right now, you're better off going to an LFG service. And there's nothing wrong with folks in the lighthouse like going elsewhere to LFG. Like right. this is not the say all be all only place you can be. I use LFG every almost every time I play. Okay. You know if I'm looking for folks. And what I recommend people do, you know, see who's available, what friends are in the lighthouse, you know, grab group up. And if you need two more, then head over to the LFG and grab two folks and invite them to be a guest in our server, because right. that just helps the whole community grow. And I do that all the time. You know, oh, we got we have uh, four folks for a raid. We need two more. Hop over to the LFG discord. Hey, you know, we need two for a fresh raid. Any experience? Welcome. Shoot me a DM. They'll shoot me. Right. I'll invite a man. They'll get a look at the server. Wow. You know, there's a lot of people in here. There's some cool people in here. Well, Rick Hackis is in the server. Yeah. yeah you know, Whoa. yeah, you're more than welcome Rick to come hang out, you know? Yep. Yeah. You know, so it's uh, that that is the strategy that we've always recommended to people to to one successfully team up with folks, actually find people to play with. And two, not just create an, L an LFG thing because we want it to be a community. Right. I would rather have six folks make friends strong friends right. than have a hundred folks LFG for activities. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, quality over quantity there. Quality over quantity. J man, thank you very, very much for this, for this entire conversation. I, it, it, it uh, I've learned a lot about uh, the process. Finding good people is hard and that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's just part of life and growing your server. Um, but I, uh, I've definitely learned a lot being in the discord, being around all the people being around admins yourself and this conversation. So thank you. Thank you for, for, uh, a big time for me today, man. I appreciate it. No, oh, dude. Thank you for having me. And thank you for being a, you know, a whole, a key player, you know, in the discord as well. Like well, I mentioned, there's, uh, it's nothing without, without the team. So. 
Right. And, and, it, and that thought process is one of the reasons that I stay is that, is that you, you understand the larger picture of this isn't, this isn't the fundament server. This isn't J man server. This is, this, this is the lighthouse and we need to, mm -hmm. and, and I say this word and a lot of people don't get it. It is a stewardship. You have, you are, you are creating this. You are building this. You have been given this opportunity to be the steward of this community. And not a lot of people understand what being this, being a good steward of a community of an opportunity means. And I, I, I'm glad that thought process is something that you have in your head. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bill. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Please do check out GBIRL.com for the audio versions. We're going to end this episode and step over to do a GBIRL Raw episode, which you will only find on GBIRL.com because that's the only place a Raw episodes hang out. Thanks, to everybody, for coming by, and I'll see you, see you soon. Thank you for tuning in today. You can find links to everyone on the show in the description below. Check out Bill the Conqueror on Twitch and Twitter to stay up to date on his thoughts and ideas about gaming culture. 